Good afternoon, everyone. Shall we get started? Um, dear guests, speakers, and journalists, before we get ac actually started, I will just have uh, some few housekeeping items and remarks. We would like to bring your attention to the QR code feature in your badge, which directly links to the official Telegram channel of the Astana International Finance Center. We rightly uh, recommend subscribing to the channel to stay up to date on the latest information regarding the conference. By subscribing, you can receive timely updates on the upcoming session topics and their locations, as well as gain access to useful materials from the speakers, like the presentations and captivating even photos. And also some remarks about our sponsors. Um, we all very like to extend our sincere appreciation for the conference Golden Partners Visa, Freedom Holding Corp, and ITS companies for their fruitful cooperation and support. And lastly, about fire safety for the trading hall, your safety in case of fire emergency, kindly know that the exits can be found in the mini atrium behind, uh, between the block 3.4 and 3.3, and in the zone after the elevators. Well, now we start actually the contribution on sustainable finance to a low carbon development new to the session that we're going to have in 50 minutes. Sustainable finance can play a crucial role in promoting low carbon development by channeling investments towards environmentally sustainable projects and supporting the transition to a low carbon economy and more resilient economy. The universe of sustainable finance consists of different instruments including thematic ESG flavor bonds, green social sustainable SLBs, and related elements of the market such as standards, incentives, and disclosure. The transition to net zero emissions opens up an investment opportunity that totals almost $200 trillion by 2050, or nearly $7 trillion per year. Electric vehicles and low carbon power will be the biggest on the forefront markets for investors, followed by power grids, this according to the new or latest outlook from Bloomberg NEF. During this session, we will discuss sustainable finance instruments and related policy measures driving the sustainable finance market, especially here contextualized to Kazakhstan. Participants will gain a comprehensive understanding of the diverse tools available to mobilize capital for sustainable projects and the elements of market and the potential impact they have on achieving a greener future. The session will try to answer the following questions. Innovative and emerging sustainable finance tools, the key trends from both public and the private viewpoints, sustainable green social loans and transitional finance in general, all the instruments and market instruments that we have to tackle, the role of international financial vehicles that can catalyze the green investments to roll out, and if social taxonomies needed are needed to facilitate the development of the social bond markets. My name is Conrad Albrecht, and I work for the Eurasian Development Bank on the Sustainability Division, and very happy here then to have our four panelists that will be driving the session. And before we get started, we also have an introductory remark, a welcome address from Dr. Majun. It's going to be a recorded video. He's the chairman of the Green Finance Committee of China and the co-chair of the G20 Sustainable Finance Study Group. We can uh, roll out now the video, please. Congrats for the kind introduction. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. First of all, please allow me to thank the Astana International Financial Center for inviting me to the Astana Finance Days 2023, which has now become a prominent event in Eurasia and beyond the region as AIFC is now actively involved in many international platforms, including by hosting the Central Asian Secretariat of the Green Investment Principles for the Belt and Road. I'm very pleased to speak in this session on system of finance, but I'm sorry that I'm unable to attend this event in person. Through this video presentation, I want to provide you a few updates on recent developments in the international system of finance market including the efforts made by the G20, the International Platform for Systemal Finance, or IPSF, 
as well as some progress in China. Specifically, I would like to briefly touch upon four topics. Number one, the work of the G20 Sustainable Finance Working Group, which I co-chaired in the past few years until recently. The Common Ground Taxonomy, which is produced by the International Platform for Sustainable Finance. The Transition Finance Framework, which was developed by the G20 end of last year. And finally, uh, some progress in China. Starting with the G20 Sustainable Finance Working Group, as some of you know that the China initiated this uh, G20 Green Finance work in 2016, when China was a presidency. At that time, it was called the G20 Green Finance Study Group, which I co-chaired since uh, 2016. And uh, in the past few years, this group was upgraded to a working group. Uh, it's called the G20 Sustainable Finance Working Group. In 2021, the working group produced the Sustainable Finance Roadmap, which outlined the uh, major tasks for the international community to work on to push uh, the uh, uh, green finance agenda or sustainable finance agenda ahead. And uh, the key items in the roadmap include the efforts needed to enhance the uh, comparability, interoperability, and eventually consistency of uh, sustainable finance alignment approach, including taxonomy, and also the need to uh, enhance the consistency of sustainability reporting standards, including by launching the ISSB, and also the need to develop a transition finance framework. In 2022, the major effort of the G20 System of Finance Working Group was the uh, drafting and publication of the transition finance framework, which was endorsed by G20 leaders in November last year in Bali, Indonesia. And uh, this year, um, under the Indian presidency, the G20 began to work on nature-related issue and also social impact investing, and also emphasize the need to enhance cooperation, collaboration, and devotion of more resources into capacity building of sustainable finance, especially for developing country and emerging markets. Moving on, the second topic, which is the IPSF work on common ground taxonomy, I think it's important in um, delivering the uh, increased comparability and interoperability of taxonomies across countries. That was started in uh, 2020 when China and Europe agreed to lead a working group under the IPSF to produce a common ground taxonomy, which would be recognized both by China and EU. And it was based on the Chinese taxonomy and EU taxonomy. Through two and a half years' work, uh, this working group produced two versions of the Common Ground Taxonomy, which now include 72 activities covering uh, all areas of climate mitigation, including renewable energy, uh, green transportation, um, batteries, and the green buildings, and so on. And it's now being used by many issuers, especially large Chinese banks issuing international green bonds in the uh, international capital markets. And also, uh, the Chinese uh, uh, institutions are working on labeling some of the existing Chinese green bonds by the Common Ground Taxonomy, which will then make them available to the international markets. And the phase two work of the Common Ground Taxonomy has just begun. Um, last week, I co-chaired this uh, Common Ground Taxonomy working group meeting uh, together with Marcel Hug from Europe. And we announced that uh, we are entering into a new phase which will expand the common ground taxonomy in two directions. One is expanding the country or jurisdiction basis um, by including more countries into the uh, comparison, uh, which means that in the future, the common ground taxonomy will no longer be only based on Chinese and European taxonomy, but also uh, include other countries' taxonomies, such as Singapore. And the second direction of future CGT work uh, is to expand activities beyond climate mitigation, which means that in the future, climate adaptation, nature, and other environmental objectives will be included uh, into the uh, common ground taxonomy. And finally, uh, we highlight the need to increase uh, efforts on capacity building, which is to uh, disseminate more uh, CGT-related knowledge to other countries and jurisdictions that are interested in developing taxonomy. And very hopefully, uh, some jurisdictions will be using common ground taxonomy as a building block for developing their taxonomy, which means that the, they will be adopting a CGT plus approach, namely using CGT activities and uh, plus some local featured activities 
and form the uh, green taxonomy in that jurisdiction. Moving on to the third topic of transition finance, as I mentioned uh, earlier, that in 2021, the G20 agreed that the transition finance will be an important task uh, for the international community. And uh, a lot of jurisdictions are beginning to experiment transition-related uh, financial instruments for the purpose of enhancing uh, financial support for carbon-intensive sectors to move towards lower carbon and eventually net zero. And we believe that the transition finance, which is uh, uh, quite different from the pure green finance which you observed in the past decade, uh, will be very important, especially in economies uh, with relatively high carbon intensity. And therefore, uh, the G20 Sustainable Finance Working Group spent uh, most of the first nine months of last year um, and drafted the uh, transition finance framework and finally get endorsement from the G20 leaders in November. And this framework, which is published in 2022 G20 Sustainable Finance Report, has five pillars, including the uh, way to identify transition activities, the way to disclose transition-related uh, information, the uh, products that's needed to support transition efforts, um, the fiscal, monetary, and other regulatory incentive that's needed to make uh, transition projects more bankable, and finally, uh, the need to enhance the uh, just element of transition. So all these are discussed in details, and 22 principles are outlined in the uh, G20 document. And we're hopeful that uh, jurisdictions uh, can apply these 22 principles uh, into the actual work in designing the transition policy framework. And finally, um, just a quick update on China. We started the development of a green financial system in 2015-16, when China announced the uh, green finance guideline. And uh, between then and now, it's roughly seven or eight years China has developed the largest green lending market in the world. Uh, we now have a outstanding green loans in the amount of 25 trillion RMB, and we have the second largest green bond market in the world. Um, beyond the current success, I think uh, uh, the next major step for China to move towards uh, uh, net zero is to launch the transition finance framework along the line proposed by the G20. In fact, uh, starting from last year, the Chinese central bank, namely PBOC, have begun the drafting of a transition finance framework, which include at least the four sectors, such as uh, coal-fired power generation, steel, cement, and agriculture. In the future, they will include more sectors into the uh, taxonomy. And the drafts are ready, and uh, the central bank is now uh, consulting uh, different players in the market to refine the uh, taxonomy, and hopefully they will be uh, officially released for consultation, for public consultation soon. At the local level, uh, there are many experiments already on transition finance. For example, Hujo, which is one of the uh, regional pilots for green finance, has already developed their own uh, transition taxonomy and launched 90 transition projects with government incentives, such as uh, low-cost funding and uh, uh, guarantees. Let me stop here for my remarks, and I hope uh, this is useful for some of the audience here. And once again, I'd like to thank AIFC for inviting me to join this uh, discussion, and I wish today's event a great success. Thank you again. We thank you very much for the introductory remarks of Dr. Ma Jun, and we highlight how important is transition finance, especially on this uh, market in Central Asia and other emerging and frontier markets, how this is crucial for transitioning to a low carbon economy, and some other remarks very important on the leadership of the Chinese um, um, preeminence on transition finance as well, and how it's important to tackle the um, harmonization and all the challenges that we have with um, the different taxonomies as well we have in Russia, we have in Kazakhstan, now we have the model taxonomy in uh, the European, uh, the Eurasian region as well. So we now move forward with the panel session and we kickstart with a public financier viewpoint from a state-based bank which has a crucial social play field with the ability to provide subsidized loans for the citizens of Kazakhstan. I welcome Ms. Lizat Igarimova. She began her career as a teacher at the Faculty of Economics at the Eurasian National University 
In 2004, she worked as a national expert on the economic development of the UNDP RK chapter. She was also the deputy chairman of the board of Viterec NMH company and the chairman of the board of the directors of mortgage organization Kazakhstan. Since 17, she has been the chairman of the board of Otbasi Bank. So for banks uh, worldwide, eco-mortgage uh, is becoming a very important tool for decarbonizing the loan portfolios and the mechanism of ESG transformation as a whole. And thanks to the launch of Otbazi Bank's Green Mortgage uh, Program, Kazakhstanis now can have access to loans for the purchase of apartments in a very energy efficiency uh, residential buildings and also aligned with different uh, local or global or regional green building standards that we have uh, in this play field. And the rate of such low one is set by Otbasi Bank as a rate of 12.5%. The question that I have and I really would like to very much hear from you is uh, like your detailed view of this great program. So if you can talk more about this program and the view of the bank in general approach for financing this more affordable um, mortgage for lending and specific for gender and for women borrowers, given that the Asian Development Bank, they also issued gender bonds for this specific lending program. And if you can also consider, uh, if we can consider that the bank will be issuing uh, more green or social bonds in the nearest future and specifically for the gender paradigm as well. Good day, dear participants of the session. Which way is more comfortable to speak? Shall I speak from my place or uh, I need to move? So could you please show my presentation? We have two products within which we are now uh, promoting ESG principles in Kazakhstan. Well, first of all, we speak about green mortgage. Uh, is it possible to show my presentation on this slide, on the screen? So the green mortgage uh, is a loan that we give to our uh, borrowers for purchasing the housing that is built in accordance with the standards of our Kazakhstani Association of Green Construction called OMER. And this national standard uh, provides for three levels. We have gold, silver, and bronze levels. We have allocated the budget within our development plan, 10 billion singe, and we were really surprised by the fact that uh, people uh, and, I mean, the developers were interested in this uh, pro product. Uh, 13 uh, developers addressed to us, and. Uh, Right now, about 2 billion tingi have been used, more than 70 loans were issued, and now there are lots of developers uh, proposing their partnership to our bank. And now we started to study carefully all the program parameters, and we came to the conclusion, you know, when we develop a special program, especially when we speak about green mortgage, we need to set standards higher than we have at the market. For example, now for these gold, silver, and bronze uh, levels, we have the um, same uh, rate. However, if we look at the criteria where these certificates is issued, I mean, our national standard, we see that, for example, to receive the bronze national standard, it is enough just to do you know, the separate, uh, the waste separation, but um, gold standard, uh, they are now uh, having uh, better issues with regard to energy efficiency. So as a bank, we need to promote this idea better and we need to make our borrowers to have more interests and to do it we can uh, through the rate, interest rate. You have said that the interest rate that we established is quite marketable, however, it is not uh, the beneficial one. So that's why we uh, made a conclusion 
make a decision that within a week we will do the analysis and we will make these differential rates depending on the standard level that our developer received the gold or the silver. And uh, when the bank is going to design such products, it causes great changes in the society and in community. It gives an opportunity to rethink and our borrowers try to rethink the aims and purposes why they are buying uh, this accommodation. And the second product, this is gender mortgage, it's called Omai. And very often in social networks, uh, there, people are joking around that um, we discriminate male. Because in this program, the female is in priority, of course, and she is the owner of uh, this uh, accommodation and finally, uh, 2,063 uh, bo uh, bo uh, mortgages were given, 22% in Astana, very economically active region. Even according to this audience, you see how wonderful this gender development is going on. More than 80% of the audience on ESG, that's m women. So that is why we have received the last tranche and uh, the demand was uh, that high that uh, we even had a great variety of comments and during four hours after we have announced the start a point of accepting the applications we had uh, t twice more uh, of those applications that the uh, Asian Bank of Development has provided for us. So what we do within the frameworks of ESG it should be very consistent and uh, moving step by step but we also understand that it is very long process and we work with the company Perswaterhouse and uh, that got the tender and we are working on our internal regulatory documents to get this ESG rating. As you have mentioned, do we plan some attractions? Yes, we do. We had communications and negotiations with AFC and with other international institutions that are interested in providing the loans to us that will be promoting the green mortgage or gender issues. But we think that there is a great potential inside Kazakhstan even and uh, at uh, the stock exchange, at Kazakhstan Stock Exchange, we have great potential to have these attractions in compliance with all the principles. For us, why Kazakhstan market is very interesting because according to all classical norms of bank lending, the borrower must be funded in the currency that he earns. So the whole mortgage must be in tenge and the portfolio that is uh, established here, more than 50% in the whole mortgage portfolio during 20 years uh, that the bank has been functioning, it was tangy. We had never, have, have never had any currency risks. And uh, I believe that um, this uh, idea is according to SG principles, it is kind of um, locked system, very uh, low interest rates. We have only 2% per annum. Are you the depositors of Jules Duroy's Burbank? See, hooray. We have more than 35% here. Those people who had this deposit 2% per annum hoping that they will solve their housing issues and they will receive this loan per very low interest rate. And can you imagine during 20 years the bank has been working with the same product that does not change its, itself. So this is sustainable development, those principles that would be, promote, would be promoted by the bank. Of course, it's not easy path, it's not easy way, it's long-term uh, work and we have KPI tasks that we try to execute and fulfill. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vizet. This is very important um, to share and I, I really uh, endorse importance as well in the ESG rating, as you said, for especially attracting international investors as well to the market. 
Um, and I think we all agree that, um, you know, as gentlemen here in this room, we're always going to be prioritizing women's first. Um, now we move forward uh, to the public side again. We continue moving on this uh, sphere of the discussion uh, with the participation of Mr. Andras Bebes, uh, Head of Strategy and Research of Government Debt Management Agency of Hungary. Mr. Bebes has been uh, working at the Hungarian Government Debt Management Agency for the last 10 years. And he's the head of strategy and research since 2020, and his department is also responsible for uh, the, all the ESG-related efforts and the updates on the green bond framework of the country, of Hungary, and uh, the integrated report on allocation and environmental impact of Hungary's green bond proceeds. Um, Mr. Andras, um, the Hungarian authorities um, are basically spearheading all the development of green finance market in the country. Uh, the government debt management agency uh, held its first green um, Hungarian government bond auction back in 2021 and uh, intended for the use of the proceeds to finance and refinance as well expenditures on transition to a low carbon economy and in line with the sovereign green bond framework of the country, right? And the, also the central bank announced that its green monetary policy toolbox strategy to complement the monetary policy with green elements. So this also confirms that uh, the transformation of the financial system as a whole and also the renewal of the central bank way of thinking on green finance. So as a result, the Central Bank of Hungary is now ranking among you know, the top world leaders in green the green central banking, as well as taking substantial steps to stimulate the markets, and especially the green housing market in particular with the Green Home Program. So we will very much like to hear, given this very successful track record and the launch of the sovereign green bond framework, we would uh, like to understand more specifically what exactly catalyzed the decision to introduce this very ambitious program in the country and if you can also pinpoint any um, intended to introduce, intentions to introduce similar or complementary tools in the nearest future as well. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. First of all, thank you for the opportunity to uh, having me on this uh, panel. So, <clears throat> in line with international efforts, Hungary is strongly committed to combating climate change and biodiversity loss. And as such, Hungary has been the first EU member to sign to ratify the Paris Agreement. The nationally determined uh, contribution set out in the Paris Agreement in the form of the National Energy and Climate Plan 2021-2030 National Energy Strategy 2030 and the National Clean Development Strategy 2020-2050 paved the way for a low carbon and environment friendly economy. Investment needs are financed by the private sector, EU funds, loans of the European Investment Bank, sales of emission allowances under the EU emissions trading scheme, government tax revenues and green bonds. With the green bond framework presented in 2020, as an element of uh, the Climate and Environmental Protection Action Plan, the Hungarian government aims to raise a part of the financial resources needed to meet its uh, ambitious commitments. The framework was also a response to uh, increased demands for uh, demand for green bonds for both foreign and local investors. And thus it helped uh, further uh, broadening Hungary's investor base. Although, the, the, although eligible green expenditures cover a broad spectrum, the vast majority of spending goes to clean transportation, uh, mostly uh, railway expenditures. The framework has been uh, rated by the external reviewer Cicero, Shades of Green, as medium green, on a three-step scale back in 2020, where dark green is rating, dark green rating is given to programs that reduce greenhouse gas emissions and are resilient to uh, effects of climate change. Uh, I believe uh, Hungary 
is the only sovereign that has issued in four different currencies in green format. So we have issued in, uh, in the euro market uh, two times back in 2020 and 22. Both were very successful, five and four times oversubscribed. Uh, we've also issued uh, in Japan and in China in green format. And also, uh, in starting from 2021, we issued uh, Hungarian sovereign uh, green uh, government bonds. And uh, in line with uh, rising expectations from uh, investors and uh, regulatory changes in the last few years, we are in the process of uh, updating uh, Hungary's uh, green, uh, green bond framework. So with regards to the second question, AKK is uh, constantly exploring opportunities uh, to diversify. Possible directions uh, for products, product developments can be uh, social sustainability or sustainability linked bonds. Um, for each type of these, uh, these, uh, these bonds, uh, ICMA, uh, recommends a new framework to be established and uh, which should also be subject to second party opinion. So when we are considering uh, of uh, introducing a new product, uh, a precise cost, be uh, cost benefit analysis, including an assessment of feasibility uh, is essential. Knows however that uh, in case of uh, social and sustainability, bonds, uh, the scrutiny can go uh, significantly beyond environmental considerations. For sovereigns with unsatisfactory ratings in the dimensions like corruption or rule of law, uh, there is a much lower chance uh, of a successful issuance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and we, we would like to wish, you know, continue this very good high, you know, track record that you have and for the future even peering with other governments and also while well, your experience can be beneficial for other emerging markets and frontier markets as well. I think it's very important to share this uh, very successful experience with all the participants. Thank you so much. Now we can move forward to the session part which now goes to a very specific purpose investment vehicle. Um, our next uh, panelist, uh, Ms. Gaukar Baribueva, and pardon if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, <laughs> is the chairperson of the management board of Kazakhstan Entrepreneurship Development Fund, more known as the MOO. Mr. Galkar held the position of Vice President for Financial and Economic Affairs of the Subordinate Organization of the Administration of the President of the Republic of Kazakhstan, and since March 17, continued her professional endeavors and activities at the DAMU Fund. Well, DAMU is a very great, uh, also a very great case of a local success. Uh, it has been uh, the first green bond issuer in the country, in Kazakhstan. It was pioneering, uh, it has been pioneering the sustainable finance market back in 2020. And 2021 received the Green Finance Market Pioneer Award from the Climate Bonds Initiative. The fund has also been very active on the capital markets for green and, and social bonds, supporting all the sustainable impact projects as a development institution under programs sub, as, such as the subsidization of green bond coupon rates and green low interest rates via the Government National Project 2025 and the UN Development Program Sustainable Cities for Low Carbon Development in Kazakhstan. So, Ms. Gaukar, I would like to understand um, how is sustainability being integrated as part of the culture of your organization, uh, its governance, its business models, how it has been applied to the operational side as well, and main global commitments, principles that you have been applying for and considering for the move, um, and all tools uh, that you can predict for the near future as well. And the second question, tackling the first one as well, is that the fund is very steadily associated with the promotion of green finance. 
uh, all among with small and medium sized enterprises, right, businesses, including joint programs with UNDP and other UN led institutions. So, if you can also tell me, uh, tell the audience a little bit more about the SME segment, that also be very important for us to understand how that has been driving, uh, been driven uh, and evolved with the global agenda. The floor is yours. Five minutes. Uh, hello. Thank you, Mr. Connors, for the given speech. Actually, I prepared today my speech in Russian, <laughs> so I will. I will. Доклад мой будет на русском языке, да. My report will be in Russian, so including the specificity of the audience. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude. Uh, thank you so much. I would like to share the experience of Damu Fund. So basically, the sustainable development principles and main activities in corporate culture of the fund, it has appeared at uh, the uh, based on that agenda that was formed in the sphere of sustainable development. And this agenda, as uh, we know, uh, we have uh, uh, set up the 17 goals of sustainable development, and the DAMU Fund provides uh, the uh, great variety of support. And, and these objectives are connected to the fund very tightly. And we were understanding, basically, so the development of the economy should be connected with the direction and uh, devoted to sustainable development. That is why we have started this work from our source, being ready for this work. Automation, digitalization of all state services, optimization of all business processes that um, exist in our fund. Lizad was the chair a uh, woman of the MOVE fund and the digitalization has been started uh, at her period of activities during that period uh, when she was there. So practically 100% of state services that are provided to the entrepreneurs, they are um, online. These uh, services are online. Pro submitting the application, signing the contract. So two, three times, th two, three months less time that you need to uh, spend for this. Plus the policy on ecological governance uh, standards. As I've already mentioned, since our activities are connected with ESG goals, of course, social development is the key um, factor of our activities. This is the ESG number eight, sustainable work and uh, economical growth, OECD countries pay great attention to you, these objectives, and uh, when we provide the measures of state support, we always ask the entrepreneurs not just to keep the workplaces, but to create the new ones. So this is like the uh, mutual commitment obligation to you, those state support measures. And 190,000 projects were supported, 11 trillion tenge were uh, delegated to this and socio-economical impact, it's about 180,000 new workplaces and we kept about 800,000 workplaces. When it comes to the financial tools, as you've already mentioned, we have quite vast line of how we can support our entrepreneurs subsidizing the interest rates, partial uh, guarantees and uh, privileged um, credits and borrowings. So in order to involve uh, SME and financial institutions in 2020, 2021, we have issued the first social and green bonds of the Republic of Kazakhstan. So we were the pioneers among other financial institutions that issued these um, papers. Why uh, these documents? Why? We focused on those entrepreneurs that during lockdown, during pandemic uh, period, they did not work. They were closed. And of course, if they had some losses, some expenditures, they needed to have the uh, privileged loans in order to support their activities and to keep the workplaces. So together with the government, we have approved the list in the healthcare system and tourism and trade and tourism, hotel and hospitality industry, those activities that could not function during lockdown period. And in order to 
um, make these loans cheaper within the frameworks of social bonds. We have applied here the tools of subsidizing and guarantee provisions. And in 2020, the final rate was 6% for the interpreters only. And I would like to emphasize that the fund was considered as the winner, as the first deal of the IPO at the uh, uh, bond award. Coming to the second question, supporting the green financing and funds. Yes, the fund is interested in promoting the green funds and green financing. It is uh, like the mainstream uh, in the world, and it means that it's like the 13th objective. Uh, of uh, the uh, ESG and as the financial institute, we plan to contribute into the implementation and realization of this plan and promoting the partnership Green Bridge for 2021-2024 and to have renewables in the balance of the country up to 15% by 2030 and to achieve the carbon neutrality, net neutrality in the country by 2060. So, in general, over this uh, short time, we have uh, supported 141 green projects. The amount of loans is 150 billion tinge currently. Um, we all know that there is a tendency to modernize the production facilities and uh, in introduction of innovations using energy efficient and technological innovations. And in 2017, in the partnership with UNDP, we have uh, concluded the agreement, which is called uh, Sustainable Cities for Low Carbon Development in Kazakhstan. And in three years, in we uh, in three years, so three years later, 2020, we have started the new program, Renewable Energy Sources. So this program, uh, in partnership with UNDP allowed us to significantly decrease the interest rate, so to make this funding cheaper for the entrepreneurs. And I could give one example. This is in Karaganda City. We have the construction of a new heating uh, facility, 7.5 megawatt capacity. The amount of loan 130 million tinge, and uh, out of UNDP we have subsidized 10%. So the final interest rate for five years for entrepreneur was just 4.5 percent and if we look uh, from the green uh, aspect the amount of costs for fuel decreased twice the emissions uh, decreased by 3,000 tons per year we have lots of examples like this as I have mentioned we have more than 140 projects and this is one of the examples also to support green finances in year 2020 just one more closing remark, yes, given the time. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you know, uh, green bonds, uh, speaking about green bonds, uh, this was the mechanism as for the social bonds. We also have uh, made this rate cheaper due to the budget subsidizing. And uh, there was one uh, good issue. To what extent businesses involved to this green agenda? Of course, we will say it like this, that we don't have this, uh, let's say, mass uh, participation. However, now companies are interested in new technologies, new production facilities, and all Europe and countries of Central Asia, uh, countries of Central Asia, they also uh, try to transfer to new environmental equipment, and they're using more green technologies. And uh, here we have also prepared specific program. Uh, our interest rate are from uh, 6 to 8 percent. And the final one with regard to our plans, uh, we are now planning to receive ESG rating so that we would be able to be the uh, reliable partner for international financial institutions at this market so that we would be able to attract uh, beneficial loans for our entrepreneurs. And this will allow us uh, to uh, be the member of Green Climatic Funds. Thank you. For your um, presentation. We now move forward. We have uh, more five minutes, so we will speed up um, with Mr. Aydar. Um, he's a managing director for economy and finance, a member of the management board of Samruk Energy. Um, Mr. Aydar, um, in April 2022, uh, the Samurk Energy adopted its energy transition program for 2022-2026 period, aiming in reducing the company's carbon footprint and achieving a goal of net zero emissions by 2060. 
Uh, and as part of this strategy, in the next few years, the company plans to reconstruct all the thermal power plants of the Alice subsidiary by switching them to coal, to, from coal to gas. Um, and in order to attract additional investment and funding resources for the reconstruction of these CHPs, a decision was made to issue bonds linked to Sustainable Development Goals, SLBs, and are in a type of bonds that where the we know financial characteristics of the bond may alter depending on whether the issue is received and achieves the predetermined sustainability ESG targets. So my specific question to you is can you in elaborate more on those plans for um, the company and this is very important for the region and how this can be part of the SLB issue if you can detail a little bit more about this uh, structure and all these ambitious targets for 2060 and to reduce the GHG emissions from Alice by 30%. The floor is yours. We have uh, five minutes. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I will I'll try to have a limit. Добрый день, уважаемые. Uh, good day, dear participants. So briefly, I would like uh, to speak about our strategy of this energy transition because Samruk Energa is um, a key um, part of energy system of the country and we were one of the first in our group front on this uh, energy transition. This is a challenge for us because all this generation is mainly from coal. Now we have set this ambitious goal by 2031 to reduce um, CO2 emissions by 30 percent, mainly through the increasing of the share of renewable energy sources. Uh, with this regard, we uh, I, I will speak more details what we are doing with this regard. But speaking about green finance, and you know, at the first stage of our program, we speak about transition of current facilities from coal to gas. It uh, allows us to decrease 1.52 times the emissions. Uh, speaking about Almaty uh, facilities, this is a big uh, project. We have. Uh, uh, we, we will finish it by 2026. So speaking about. Uh, uh, the power plant, we have uh, made uh, big work with uh, uh, Eurasian Development Bank and, uh, you know, this sustainability link bonds is an interesting tool that allows us to reach our KPI. Now we are working on consultant, uh, so mm, to reduce the interest or to have some, uh, you know, uh, motivation. It's a good project for the environment, for the region, for the city of Almaty. Speaking about our practical transition, uh, so we have defined that the development of green assets is important. You know, initially we didn't participate because mainly we were using this coal generation and all our investment project is the development of Kibastus energy nodes. This is still on our agenda, but uh, we will also develop it to a bigger extent, but now we focus more on decarbonization uh, due to consolidation of all our green assets. I mean, hydropower plants. Uh, we have uh, the Kazakh Green Power. This is uh, the companies that we have established, and uh, there we have priority projects. So please pay attention, uh, dear audience, that uh, we are planning to build uh, on the Irtish River the specific facility. Uh, we also have the modernization of uh, Shulba uh, hydropower plant. We also have some uh, projects in uh, Shelek Corridor, the construction of a specific control regulator on the Ili River, then the construction of solar plant. But this is just the initial, uh, you know, uh, initial projects in our list. But we also have some other projects that we are discussing at the international level. For example, one project, uh, we have signed the agreement for more than seven megabytes with different investors. We are also working in this direction and we are planning to be one of the uh, subjects in implementation of this project. So the final goal is, of course, to increase the share of renewable energy sources and, and um, it will be time when the basic generation will be a renewable one and then the complementary will be the coal one. So thank you. Thank you very much. Now have this uh, for any or session, uh, respectful of the time.
uh, for the next one is going to be starting just now. So unfortunately, we don't have more time for Q&A, but we can have Q&A after uh, the session with all the panelists in the hall as well. Thank you, everyone, for participating today, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much.